hello. Hello everybody. How's it going? It's good to see you. Um, what a month. Wow. What a month. <laughs> and, uh, blah, 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 blah. I clearly have forgotten how to do this on my own in this type of setting. Ha ha ha. Welcome slash welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about some books. How very exciting. In September I read 15 books. Now this includes plays from uni so it's not as impressive as what it may seem. Then once I've told you what books I have read I'm going to do my October TBR and also do my little wellness card thing at the end which is nice and wholesome a nice lovely thing that we can all do together which is great. I'm just going to jump right on in and tell you about the books. I'm going to talk to you about why you're here. So September. This is going to be stressful. Ha, ha, ha. So the first book I'm going to talk to you about is Severance by Ling Ma. Now I give this a five out of five. In this book we follow our main character Candace Chen navigating her life in two different kind of timestamps. One post Shen fever which is kind of like this pandemic virus that's kind of hit and then one afterwards. Basically at the beginning of the book we read that she is an unfulfilled Bible product coordinator, she's not really enjoying her job and then obviously this pandemic hits and she is one of the very lucky few who manages to not get infected with this virus and we just kind of watch her navigate through this new world. It's really really well written, it's really funny, uh, I would say it's quite dark in some points which is apt considering you know it is a pandemic that kills off like 99% of people. Because of the humour it makes it a lot easier to digest because obviously it's quite um a hard hitting topic especially at the moment but one thing that I will say is because of the type of fever that it is so basically once you get infected you kind of get stuck in doing like this monotonous routine that you can't break out of and you kind of your brain just shuts off and you basically just do that until you die and you just can't break out of it and I think because that is the that's the type of fever I wasn't as kind of like whoa this is a parallel to what's going on now because that's just not happening whereas with station 11 i found it a lot harder to read because it hit home a bit yeah that's that i bloody love this book i thought it was really, really funny i've probably said that about 10 million times so i'm going to shut up about this book okay the next book that i'm going to talk about is the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. i gave this a four out of five stars it would have been a five out of five if my feelings at the end of the book was a bit different I was expecting something that I didn't receive and I just thought that it could have maybe just been better if it did. This book explores the life of Evelyn Hugo who is a Hollywood actress and at the age of 79 she decides that she wants to write a book about her life which goes into talking about like all of her seven husbands and the industry and just yeah her life basically and she seeks out an unknown journalist named Monique, come on, come on, what's the last name? Monique Grant. She seeks out an unknown journalist named Monique Grant to write her story. Now, this book, I have a um, reading vlog on this and The Hobbit, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. So I'll leave that link down in the description for a more detailed, I guess, description of the book and my feelings. But I really love this. I laughed, I cried. I saw myself in the character of Evelyn Hugo kind of like trying to decipher her sexual identity. The way that she holds herself is kind of like who I want to be. She don't give no shits. Even though like she's made questionable decisions, she has no regrets and I just kind of like I want I want that as a person. I can't decide what I have for tea uh, without getting stressed. So, I love this book so much. I can't wait to reread it. The writing in it is really really good as well. Ah, just thought it was wonderful. Anyway, the next book that I read was The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, a brief synopsis is basically we follow Bilbo Baggins. We follow Bilbo Baggins who is quite an adventurous soul who lives in the Shire who is also a hobbit and basically Gandalf drags him in to this adventure with some dwarfs who are wanting to claim back their own home from the dragon Smaug fantastic mini adventures they have along the way and it's a very lovely book this is also when we come into contact with Gollum and the premise of that and the ring for the first time which is fantastic I gave this a three out of five purely because uh there was there's a lot of build-up 
to the main adventure which is the reason why they go on this quest in the first place and then you literally like have like that many pages to read about it so i just wanted more if i'm honest there was nothing wrong with the build-up i just think that there was too much build-up and not enough of like the reason why the build-up was there if that makes sense um so yeah three out of five for the hobbit and then the next book that i'm going to talk to you about is dead endia the broken halo by hamish steel now i bloody love this i gave it a five out of five and i can't see Dorothy. So I gave <laughs> I gave this a five out of five stars. I thoroughly enjoyed it. This is my first graphic novel slash adventure comic and I've had a wonderful experience. I didn't realise that this is the second one in the series, but I think that the storyline is quite loose and really easy to pick up. Basically, it focuses around a group of friends, but in particular Norma and Barney and their relationship. Basically, something happened in the first book where they ended up like falling out and it's all about them coming back together. It's set in loads of different like dimensions slash planes, but the main area is this hotel that normal runs and angels and demons can come and visit. And then Barney ends up like wrestling loads of demons and loads of stuff goes off. And it's all about basically pulling together and the strengths of friendship. Not only is the storyline really easy to pick up and it's really wholesome because it's kind of like all about this band of friends getting together. This is an extremely inclusive and diverse book. We have members of the LGBTQIA plus community as well as different races, religions and also there is a character in here with autism. There is no kind of like backstory of like any trauma surrounding any of these identities. It's literally just a joyous book. There's no trauma. It's just joy and just friends. Just just friends getting up to friends stuff. And I thought that was really, really cool to read. So I would really highly recommend it. And I'm definitely going to be buying the rest of the series. Fantastic. I'm now going to talk to you about my uni plays. I have quite a lot written down. So I am going to be reading from it just because I've read a lot. So please excuse me. So the first play that I'm going to talk to you about is East is East by Ayub Khan Din. So with this, we follow the husband and wife, Ella and George Khan. So Ella is English and George is Pakistani. And it's all about the fact that they have this family and they are trying to figure out how they want to raise their children. It specifically focuses around the subject matter of arranged marriages and the differing opinions in the family and it's really really interesting to read it is a dark comedy so it's funny like it's enjoyable but also it does shed a light into this kind of diamond uh, it sheds a light into this dynamic which is really interesting and something i've never come across before i believe it was also turned into a feature film which is kind of cool so there's that play <laughs> then the next play that i read was sugar mummies by tanika gupta and this play, this is such a short like synopsis, but this play basically explores the pros and cons of female sex tourism, specifically in Jamaica in this case. We look at different relationships and friendships that are created on the island. And yeah, it just kind of explores that whole thing. I couldn't think of a word, so I just went with that. Okay. And then after that, I read New Nigerians by Oladipo Agbuaji, and this is a satirical political play about Nigerian politics, but he says in an interview that you can also um, relate it to any politics kind of around the world, but he specifically names the UK and the US, and yeah, that's kind of basically it. It's heavily to do with the economy and the ins and outs on politics, and kind of like deciding like where your integrity lies and what you're willing to give up for politics slash power. So it's really, really interesting. Again, something I've not really come across before. And yeah, super cool to read. The next play that I read was Gone Too Far by Bola Agbaji. And in this play, we follow two estranged teenage brothers who grapple with their identity, especially now that they are faced with each other for the first time. One has uh, grown up in the UK for all of his life and the other brother has come from Nigeria to start living in the UK. Yeah, and it's it's basically all about how they come to terms with their identity and how they want to present themselves in the world. So yeah, this was one of my favourite plays that I read this month in uni. Okay, so the next play is Super Ho by Nicole Leckie. And this is a one woman show that follows the narrative of a teenage girl called Sasha who wants to be a rapper. 
can't remember if it's a rapper or just a musician. Either way, she makes music. And things go wrong at home and she ends up either being kicked out or leaving or choosing to leave. And she ends up living with this with this girl who kind of pressures her into doing cam work and then eventually leading on to sex work. And it's all about kind of like that story of her life. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the next play, <laughs> the next play that I read was Never Vera Blue by Alexandra Wood. And this is another one woman show where it delves into the life of a woman who is in an abusive relationship and has children. How do I describe this? It kind of has like, I think there's two different parallels which trying to describe the feeling of how she's feeling in real life. So for example, we get a parallel of Red Riding Hood being trapped in the wolf's belly and also a soldier and this soldier's interaction with like a spider in a spider's web to try and describe slash depict her emotions that she can't put into words about the abusive relationship that she's in. Uh, we go through stages of denial and then realization and then action. This is another one that was one of my favorite plays. I thought it was written really, really well, a really good insight and it was very delicate around the situation. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was a really, really good read. Something that I would definitely revisit. The next play is The Tyler Sisters, again by Alexandra Wood. And The Tyler Sisters is a play that literally just explores these sisters through a 50 year period. So we just get to see their different interactions and how their lives pan out and how, even though their lives are so different, how they all kind of keep that sisterly bond and still interact with each other in the same way that they did at the beginning. I think anyway, that's my opinion really really good and it's based off how cool is this it's based off a picture that this man would take of his wife and sisters and he did that for 50 years so the play was inspired by that which i thought was really cool okay the next play is consent by nina rain and consent looks into the attitudes towards rape specifically looking at how survivors of rape are treated within the british court justice system so um we see this represented in the play in two ways one through a working class woman and the next in a marriage um it is quite hard hitting it is difficult to read i also had to watch it for uni as well um yeah however having said that i think it was a really important play and it sparked a lot of discussion in class which was really cool so yeah okay so the next play, sorry, we've got literally three more and then that's it, I promise. Ah, so the next play is Affection by Outbox uh, Theatre. And Affection is made up of multiple kind of like snippets of interactions and conversations, all to do with HIV and AIDS. And the play basically aims to askew, I believe is the word I'm looking for, askew the narrative of you get HIV, then you get AIDS and then you die. So it's trying to shed a more insightful, personal narrative to it, I guess, instead of just kind of having that, it talks about the positive, it talks about affection and love. And I guess it's, it's really heartwarming. It's a really heartwarming play, even though it is really sad. And yeah it's just a bigger insight into what people experience when they are positive so the next play that i read was beautiful thing by jonathan harvey now this play this play was easily my favorite easily my favorite of this month and basically i believe it's set in the 1970s i could just be chatting absolute shit but i think it is and basically what it's about it's, it's about these two young boys i think they're like 15 16 Jamie and Stu, who are living in working class South East London. I believe South East. Wow. I say it's my favourite play and then I can't remember the facts. Ah. Anyway, basically, yeah. And both of the brothers have got very dysfunctional families. We've got a drug dealing brother. We've got an abusive alcoholic father. And basically, it's all about how they overcome these and end up not even like falling in love, but just like expressing their homosexuality and being open about that with everybody and I think what's really really nice about it is is it builds up to this kind of like idea that nobody's going to be accepting because that's the type of narrative that you see within like working class environments specifically about how like they're more old-fashioned and don't accept the LGBTQIA plus community but in this book it ends 
on such a lovely note and you're like, yeah, we need more like happy endings. We need more LGBTQIA plus happy ending plays. And I thought this was a wonderful example of that. Again, you have the intersections of of um, sexual identity and like the and class. And I just thought it was overall a wonderful book. And I loved it. And I would highly recommend reading it. So we got there in the end. Uh, the last play that I'm going to be talking about is The High Table by Temi Wilkie. I was really fortunate enough to be able to see this play before, you know, Corona. And I thought it was magnificent. I laughed. I cried. Woof. I thought it was phenomenal. Basically, this play looks at the marriage between Leah and Tara and kind of their experience with um, homophobia within their family. And then, but it's kind of, it's set in three places. So you've got it set in London, Lagos. It's also set in the afterlife. And we have sections where their ancestors who are of Nigerian heritage discuss the idea of homosexuality and basically they all kind of like cast a vote whether or not it should be accepted or not and it's really really interesting extremely moving and very funny it's extremely funny and again it's just joyous and I bawled my eyes out I bawled my eyes out I think the play I wrote a note here <clears throat> I think the play does a very good job of stripping down stereotypes and showcasing um joy and love I just thought it was wonderful again magnifique and breathe Woo! that's everything that I read in September wow my mouth is so dry I decided to not rate any of the plays purely because I'm doing it for my uni research for uni classes so yeah I'm not rating them and there's a lot I'd just rather not um but obviously you can tell clearly like the ones that I enjoyed etc etc so like I said a very jam-packed September and I'm expecting the same for October I'm hoping to read more books this month and that's my goal so I'm gonna try and do that so speaking of what a lovely little segue I'm now gonna talk to you about my October TBR guys guys it's gonna be a whopper I've decided to challenge myself. I'm going to tell you what I've already got in my TBR and then I'm going to move into my jar. So that's what we going to do. Let's discuss. First things first, I'm the realist. I'm going to talk to you about the books that I'm going to be reading for various like book reads along things blah, 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 that I'm doing. So the first one I am going to be reading is A Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. Like I keep saying, um, I am part of the Tolkien along and this is the book for this month, The Fellowship of the Ring, first of the three. So yeah, very excited. Um, I love Lord of the Rings, so I don't see why I'm not going to love the book. So very excited for this one. The next, I don't have the book, it is in the post at the moment. But the next is The Secret History, I believe, by Donna Tartt. That's part of the Late Night Book Club. And I have absolutely diddly squat clue. Diddly squaddly doodly. That's, the, that's another book that I'm going to be reading fantastic i think it is such a good read yeah they're my pre-planned tbrs um now guys okay don't come for me i know it's october i know it's spooky season oh but guess what i don't like being spooked so i'm not gonna do anything special for halloween don't come at me don't hate me if you've got any recommendations for books that i could potentially read in this spooky season that aren't terrifying then i would love to hear your suggestions but at the moment i'm very happy staying in my cozy corner of fantasy and romance so <laughs> without further ado i'm gonna dive into my jar i'm gonna pick three books and then we're gonna see how it goes because I have a feeling I can finish two books very easily, like literally this week. So I want to challenge myself, tee hee, even though I never finish my TBR pal. But hey, it's fine. We move. Da 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 da! The jar! Three. Okay. So I have picked three. Let's have a look what I'm going to be reading. Okay, the first one. Okay. Oh, my back. 
I'm using it for my phone. I'm so cross. I swear to God, this book haunts me every, every time. I'm going to pick one more because I'm obviously not satisfied. Yes, okay. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this will do. Okay, so here are the books that I've picked out to go on my TBR. So the first one is A New Earth, Create a Better Life by Eckhart Tolle. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's a wellness book. It's a non-fiction wellness book and it's all about the self, I believe. And... Yeah, yeah, obviously don't know. Believe I picked it for the cover when I was younger. So well done, Beth. Ha ha ha. The next one, again, in the same line. Mindfulness, a practical guide to finding peace in a frantic world. Now, I think that this one is potentially going to be better purely because of the size of the font and the style that it's in. Um, I think it could be interesting. It is a self-help mind, body and soul book which is definitely something that I probably need. Anyway, so there you go. Well, it's gonna get read at some point, so embrace it. I am gonna do that and read it. Okay, the next two books I'm actually very happy with. So I have Dorothy Coombson, Flavours of Love. This is basically a book about a woman who's starting to write a, a, a cookbook and her husband's killer is starting to write her love letters or something. Um, Maybe not love letters, but there you go, that's that fantastic i really like dorothy coombson's writing so usually i kind of really don't care about the premise i just think it's going to be good anyway um yeah i do have an extreme bias so what sue me and then the last book that i picked out was Pew! hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy by douglas adams now this is a classic this is a classic my mum bangs on about it to me all the time and i've never read it before and i'm really excited do i know anything about the book no no i don't uh, I'm not going to spoil it for myself, so yeah, going in blind with this one. Very excited though, very excited. We've made it to the end, everybody. And before I go, before I say sayonara, I am going to pick out a little wellness card, which is going to be a segment that I'm doing at the end of every month, which is why I pick a card, feel free to join in if you want, and I just do what's on the card. They are self-care ideas for when you're running on empty. <laughs> so for this one, it says put away the floor drobe. So I'm assuming that means tidy your room, you dusty bitch. Uh, okay, come for me then. Right, so that is the card for this month. So whenever my room gets a little bit dirty, a little bit un unmanageable, I'm going to pick up my card and I'm going to tidy my room. Just once. Just once is enough. Before we move on, I got last month to plant a sunflower seed. Now, I didn't plant it because it's not the right sowing time, but I bought some orange sunflower seeds. So I'm going to plant them when I go back down to uni. So that's really super exciting. And I will obviously be updating on that for those who care. Probably no one, just me, but hey, that's fine. Because I'm doing these cards for me. Ha ha. Feel free to get involved with that if you want. If not, no drama. I'm not going to be able to know. I'm talking to my camera. So, bleh, doesn't matter. Um, Yeah, that's, that's the video. I hope that you've enjoyed my wrap-up and TBR. Uh, sorry it was a bit of a beefy video. Probably chaotic as when am I ever not. Um, yeah, if you've managed to stick it out this far, thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. And yeah, let me know down in the comments if you've read anything that I've read or if you're planning on reading anything that I've commented on or like I said, anything spooky. I would love to know, please, goddamn. But spooky, that's not going to spook me because I get scared by my own shadow and trees outside my window. That's everything. Um, I hope that you guys are doing well. And yeah, I guess that's it for this video, so I'll see you in the next one. Sick. Okay. Bye. Jump. Jump. Ah.